Tell the team, and now joining us on the hotline is the color analyst for the Brooklyn Nets on WFAN in New York, and that's Tim Capstra, who's joining us now live from Toronto. Tim, it's Zach and Chase here. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Well, we appreciate you giving us a few minutes today. So the band came out yesterday. Everyone was waiting for it. What was your reaction to Adam Silver's remarks? I was I was happy. I, I had uh, I had hoped that uh, it would be received. It would be the toughest penalty possible, and it was received. In my opinion, uh, not just my opinion. I just thought around the league from the players, from their tweets, and everything you've got. Uh, he did as much as he could possibly do yesterday, and I think he did a great job. I would give him an A+. Plus. I tweeted that out there. I thought he did a sensational job with the uh, ban yesterday. But now the owners are going to try to force him out. Do you believe the owners will support Adam Silver's uh, statement from yesterday? Yes, they will. I mean, I, I, 75% of the owners, there may be a few that have some, because of the legalities, or thing, they may have some issues with something. And Donald Sterling will not be an easy guy just to ask to let go. He's already said not for sale about his team. He's been he spent his whole life in court. He enjoys that kind of stuff. But I, I believe that uh, Adam Silver won't have any problem getting 75% of the votes. And because of that, I think it's an NBA bylaws thing. It's not a legal thing. I think that's why they'll have success. And, and Sterling would be smart to sell his team, you know, before the uh, value of his franchise uh, drops dramatically. Tim Capshaw joins us right now. And Tim, David Stern was an integral part in making the NBA into what it is today and being a powerful league. And uh, since Adam Silver has become NBA commissioner, this was his first landmark decision that he had to make. What do you think uh, of, of the job that Adam Silver has done since he was anointed NBA commissioner? Well, I think yesterday was his signature signature move, and what what you see about him is that you know, that was, you know David Stern obviously did so much for for NBA basketball, uh, but Adam Silver is a different personality. He, he's kind of uh, he's kind of got uh, a kind of no nonsense approach, nothing extra. He gives you uh, direct answers and doesn't leave anything. Yeah, it just seems well thought out, very sharp. And very fair. Not that David Stern wasn't. He certainly was at all times also. But you see his direct personality and how I think he has great leadership skills. Just based on what you saw yesterday, I thought he handled it uh, as well as you possibly could. In the words he used, Zach and, and Chase, and also in how he said the words. You know, he had a little bit of attitude towards in his, in his press conference. And I know he had that because it, I, I think it's important to have – when you're the boss, a little bit of extra, and Adam Silver certainly showed that. I like the reaction that a lot of the teams in the NBA playoffs have had after the situation came out, but what have been some of the reactions from the Brooklyn Nets community after these comments were made public? Well, I, I, you know, I'm just looking and reading. I think uh, you know, an important person certainly in, 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 this, in, in the NBA the last year has been Jason Collins, and Jason Collins was so favorable to... Uh, Adam Silver and how he how he dropped a hammer on on Donald Sterling, you know, in in, in the name of ignorance, and, and I thought that was a, a very poignant tweet from a very important person in the last year in the NBA. Uh, him, along with all the other players, seem to be very positive. Nothing's been negative about it. Nothing's been average. Everybody feels the same way. It's, it was a really great job by Adam Silver. And Doc Rivers got put in a really tough spot, and you've seen him won a championship with the Boston Celtics. He left there for the Clippers, and two of his former players are on your team right now, the Brooklyn Nets and KG and Paul Pierce. Have they shed any light on this whole situation to you? Uh, just sympathizing with, um, you know, with, with Doc Rivers and, and you, know, the, you know, dealing with it, dealing with it from his end being an employee and then dealing with... Uh, the coach of a team of, of many offended players, and uh, just, but you know, if, if a one coach was going to be the guy that would have to handle a press conference, talk directly, handle that kind of situation, you probably want it to be Doc Rivers. Nobody is as smooth and as intelligent with his words as Doc, and he he handled everything great.
We're spending a few minutes with Tim Capshaw, color analyst for the Brooklyn Nets on WFAN Radio. Tim's currently in Toronto getting ready for the Toronto Raptors to go up against the Brooklyn Nets in the playoffs. That series tied at 2-2. And I, I agree with you. I believe that this Commissioner Silver did a sensational job yesterday. I thought the support around the league on this whole incident has been really good the way the players have united. But uh, some people bring up the violation of privacy that occurred and how the tapes were released. Do you have a problem with how the tapes were released? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't know enough about that kind of stuff. You know, I thought, again, Adam Silver said, well, you know, uh, he didn't get into that kind of, he, he kind of just, yeah, you know, I, I just think that, you know, I, I did, honestly don't know enough about the legal side of that kind of stuff to really have a strong opinion, but uh, all I know is once I knew his voice was on it, I didn't care what the legal terms were. I just knew this was time for somebody to, to have some strong reaction and try to your best to get rid of this guy. Especially when you are an owner, you are a public figure, and when things like this get released, it's now public, so he's going to have to deal with the consequences, and he's dealing this right now as we're talking to Tim Capstraw. And you look at this whole situation, it's really an unfortunate one for the league. How does the league move on from this? And also with Donald Sterling, I do believe that this is going to continue, like you said, uh, with the whole legality stuff. It would just be the right move for him to just walk away and sell the team. Uh, yeah, that would be the, uh, the right thing to do, and easy, probably the best thing for him to do, not only personally but financially but he probably won't i think the league step one couldn't have been any better obviously the way it was handled yesterday i think that the entire league is feels better uh the we are one slogan is important and uh again people were faced with the the nba has led the, has been incredible in, in their ability to uh bring people together and i think uh, i think that i think the league will end up stronger because of all this It's unfortunate that throughout the history of the Clippers, they have not been a great franchise, and as soon as they're destined to make a run in the NBA playoffs, a situation like this has to shine some bad light on that franchise. But what do you think about the possibility of Magic Johnson becoming the owner of that franchise? Because as we all know, Magic is a great guy. He's great for basketball, and he's even overhauled the Dodgers, who weren't doing all too well for for a couple of years there. Uh, it's interesting, you know, his name came up immediately. I'm sure the, there'd be a number of other people that would be interested also. Magic Johnson has the capability and the success the track record of being able to attract other high financial people to go in with him. Obviously, the a great job he's done with the Dodgers, so he would be a candidate. Yes, that would make sense. That would make sense for Sterling to sell there. It would make sense for him to somewhat help it, whatever image he might have. But the fact that it makes sense means it probably won't ever happen. He won't make it that easy. Could Magic Johnson end up with the team and his people? That would be fantastic. That would be uh, uh, it would be great. But uh, you know, who the heck? Who knows? Donald Sterling's going to make it difficult as difficult as he can. But at some point in time, uh, ownership will, will change hands. Let's get to the Nets play on the court. It's 2-2 going back to Toronto. Darren Williams struggled in game four, only having 15 points. And everyone compares Darren Williams to Jason Kidd, and it's easy comparison to make. And Nets fans want Darren Williams to be the next Jason Kidd. Do you see D. Will having a bounce-back performance here in game five? I think so. I think he, he has a tendency to learn his lessons well. He, he knows he needs to be aggressive. Spent the fourth quarter not looking for shots, kind of just kind of being out there, handling the ball and moving it around. No, he's got to be the guy. He's he's got to understand that yes, Pierce and Garnett are here, but in, but they are here in a not necessarily role player way, but they are here. You know, he has still got to be the guy. He along with Joe Johnson. Now, Joe Johnson, a lot of his being slowed down with only seven points had to do with double teams and at times triple teams in the fourth quarter of the last game. So therefore, it even makes it more important. For Darren Williams, when he gets touches out of those, out of the, the passes out of those double teams, that he'd be very, very aggressive and you know look to, look to be big in, in that big moment, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. Tim, final one here right before we let you run, as we have a, one more minute left with you. Uh, the Pacers, uh, they're down three two. Do you find a way to see in the number one seed come back, or are they done? Ah, uh, boy, I, I think I think you're done. Wow, I, I think they 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 they. <laughs> But, you know, I think it goes back to Atlanta for this game. This would be the one, I mean, that they have to do, I have to get. It has been one of the most shocking drop-offs of a team I've ever seen. You know, the last 
six weeks of the season going into the playoffs, and now the play, playoffs, wow. I don't think they recover, and if they do, they, I don't think they perform well in the next. If they somehow do, I don't think they ever get to the Eastern Conference Finals to lose in the next round. Well, Tim, we appreciate a few minutes today. We'll make sure to tune in to Chris and the Capper uh, coming up for Nets and the Raptors. We appreciate a few minutes. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Tim, Tim Capster are right there, color analyst for the Brooklyn Nets on WFAN Radio up in New York. We'll take a quick break, and when we get back, it's Game 7. That means one thing. we got to break it down and give you predictions. Do it die, baby. Coming up next.